In this video, I will talk about what exactly goes wrong in myasthenia gravis. But if you haven't watched part one, which is introduction and physiology, I would recommend you to do that first. And the link will be in one of those corners. So let's get into what exactly goes wrong in myasthenia gravis and why these patients are having muscle weakness. So in order for us to understand that, we have to talk about two different things, and that's antibodies and thymus. So starting with antibodies, there are three different types of antibodies that can cause problems and lead to um, myasthenia gravis. So the first one is called acetylcholine receptor antibodies, and that's the most common one, which is seen in 85% of the cases. And one thing I want to add here is that this type of antibody is immunoglobulin G, so IgG type. And if you remember from other subjects, IgG antibodies can cross the placenta. And what that basically means is that if a woman gets pregnant, well, then there is a risk that the child will get this antibody and get myasthenia gravis. So the second type of antibodies that can cause problems is called muscle-specific kinase antibodies and that's seen in 10% of the cases. And the last one, which is the least one, it's called low density protein 4 and that's seen in 5% or less of the cases. So I have drawn here the neuromuscular junction. So to recap what we talked about from the previous video, we said that in order for a muscle contraction to occur, we need first of all an impulse uh, through the neuron and from the presynaptic membrane there will be sent neurotransmitters called acetylcholine and they will go to this area which is called synaptic cleft and so what these neurotransmitters will do they will go to the other side and they will bind to these receptors which are called nicotinic acetylcholine receptors and so once they bind to these receptors, they will activate chain of reaction, which will lead to muscle contraction. So now that we have that clear, let's get into what exactly these antibodies are doing. And so in this case, I want you to take a focus on this part because we will take a look at acetylcholine receptor antibodies first. So here you see the antibodies. They come and bind to receptors here. And the way they bind is called cross-linkage. And I, have, I want you to imagine that if we have an antibody here, they kind of have two legs. So what they do is that they put one leg in one receptor and the other leg into another receptor. And that's called cross-linkage. And so imagine when you have many of those antibodies that are coming and binding to these receptors, they form clusters. And if you have read from other resources, you have probably heard that myasthenia gravis, the main problem in myasthenia gravis is that these antibodies, they bind to these receptors and they block the receptors. But the late studies have shown that not only do they bind and block these receptors from other neurotransmitters to come and bind to, well, they also lead to cluster formation. And that should be like the main mechanism behind why these are causing myasthenia gravis. Once this cluster formation occur, the membrane will notice that there is something wrong. So what then they do, they will pull inside the cluster formation with the antibodies and the receptors and they will collect them together into a vesicle and this process is called endocytosis. Let me show you how it looks. And so as you can see here the vesicle is now inside the membrane and once it's inside the lysozymes will arrive to the area and they will attach to these vessels and they will release destructive enzymes to destroy this cluster formation.
So as you can see here, they have released destructive enzymes. And so this leads to destruction of this cluster formation. So you might think, well, that's good. You get rid of the cluster. So what's the problem? Well, the problem is that this process occur too fast to keep up with. So imagine they're occurring several uh, cluster formation at the same time. So it's hard for the membrane to keep sending lysozymes and destroying these cluster formation and at the same time replacing these areas with new receptors. Usually this process with endocytosis where the lysozymes arrive and release the destructive enzymes and destroy um, the vesicle, uh, this occur in physiological condition as well when let's say there is any receptors that are destroyed for some reason then the lysozymes will arrive and you know they get rid of it in the same way but that happens in a normal pace but in this case the antibodies are just too crazy on the membrane so it just occurs too fast for the membrane to be able to keep up with it. So besides forming clusters and causing all these problems, um, the acetylcholine receptor antibodies also cause another problem. Because you see, once these antibodies, they bind to these receptors, they, their tail, which is called FC portion, they get activated. And once they get activated, they also activate complement system. And if you remember, complement system consists of proteins that are biologically made in our liver. And they are released to our blood system and has many functions. But one of them is that once antibodies, especially IgG or IgM antibodies, they attach to any receptor and get activated, well, then these uh, proteins, they will bind here and they will simply disturb the uh, membrane permeability. So imagine that's a, a problem. Once there is damaged membrane, that leads to, for example, you can imagine, for example, a roof that is damaged. Well, then the rain can get inside the home or the heat from the home can get outside. And in the same way, if we have a membrane permeability that is disturbed, well, then the intracellular components can get outside and opposite as well, the extracellular uh, components can get inside the membrane. So that's another problem that uh, these antibodies can lead to. Now let's talk about the second antibody, how they cause problems in neuromuscular junction. Well, if you remember from the previous video where we talked about this guy over here, the protein called muscle-specific kinase. Well, as the name says here, the antibody, muscle-specific kinase antibody, they come and simply destroy this protein. And that's not good because if you remember, the guy here who's sitting, he has a very important role because he keeps the membrane healthy. He's responsible to make sure that the receptors are getting recycled and everything looks as it should. So when these antibodies are coming here and destroying these proteins, well, then the membrane will have problems with staying healthy. And the same way with the low density protein 4 antibody, it has a similar mechanism which leads to that the membrane simply cannot keep staying healthy and that leads to problems in the neuromuscular junction. So now that we have talked about the antibodies and how they cause problems, let me make a conclusion so you can understand how that exactly affects in uh, myasthenic gravis and why we get this muscle weakness. So because of these cluster formation, they destroy the membrane, specifically this part of the membrane, which we call for crest. And it's like the top of the mountain. And on the top of the mountain or so-called crest, usually the receptors are located. So when we have these cluster formations, well, then the 
top of the mountain will get destroyed. So by time, it will become lower and lower, these membranes. So it's just, if you can imagine, multiple cluster formation and they get destroyed and the membrane does not have time to replace these receptors, well, then it will become flat by time. So the membrane goes from being like this shape to this shape. And that's one of the problems. The second problem is that, well, there will be less receptors um, and that's not good because then the acetylcholine neurotransmitters cannot bind to these receptors. So that's the second um, problem. And also the total surface area will become less um, because you are losing part of the membrane. So that's the third problem. So all these problems, you can imagine, there is less receptors. Acetylcholine cannot come and bind and because they cannot come and bind to these receptors, well, the muscle contraction cannot occur. And another problem is that once this membrane is becoming more flat by time, well, then there will be uh, increased distance between the neuron and the muscle. So it will become harder for the neurotransmitters to bind to these receptors. And also we said that the total surface area will be reduced. Well, that just means that there will be less receptors as well. So again, there will, it will be harder for neurotransmitters to come and bind and cause a muscle uh, contraction. And that's why we see muscle weakness in myasthenia gravis patients. Now let's talk about the thymus. And you may think, how does thymus have anything to do with the antibodies and the neuromuscular junction? Well, it is believed that thymus is part of triggering and maintaining the production of these antibodies that are causing problems in mycena gravis. So, it is seen that in around 20% of patients with mycena gravis have thymoma. And more commonly, in 60% of patients with myasthenia gravis have thymic follicular hyperplasia. And so, how does this happen? Well, then we have to take a look at this cell over here. This is a troublemaker. This one is called th thymic myoid cell. And thymic myoid cell is very interesting. The fully function of it is not known, but it looks similar like the muscle cells because it has these receptors that are called cholinergic receptors, which muscle cells also have. So these receptors are very similar to these receptors of the muscle cells. And in that way, whenever the thymus is triggered or disturbed in some way. Let's say, for example, uh, if the patient has thymoma or thymic follicular hyperplasia, the thymus get disturbed. And so antibodies will be produced to attach those, uh, to attack those uh, receptors. But not only will these antibodies attack those receptors in the thymus, but it will also enter the bloodstream and then go to the neuromuscular junction and then attack those receptors, the muscle receptors over here in the neuromuscular junction. So in this way, the thymus is believed to take part in leading to mycena gravis. It is believed to be cause of this guy over here, thymic myoid cells. So this was everything about the pathology of mycena gravis. So if you want to learn more, then keep watching the next video, which will be about the clinical presentation where we will take a look at the symptoms of a patient with mycena gravis.